we choose, we decide, we live according to our spiritual path, according to our pursuit of happiness. And that's our free will choice, our birthright. And what that means is, is that we wake up every day whenever we want to. Every day we wake up whenever we want to. Not because we have to, but because we're rested and because we want to. And we go to sleep every night, not because we have to wake up the next day at some certain time, but because we're tired and we want to fall asleep. You know, it's like, have you, have you ever laid in bed, you know, and you're not really that tired, but you're trying to go to sleep because you have to get up the next day? You know, it's kind of a waste of time, and you actually get kind of stressed because you're, like, trying to sleep, but you can't, and you're thinking about, oh, man, I can't sleep, but I need to sleep, and now I'm, you know, going to be tired tomorrow, and blah, 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 and then, and then you don't even sleep that well during the night because you never were able to get really relaxed and really comfortable and really sleep. You know, like, it's real simple stuff. Going to bed whenever we're truly tired. And sleeping when you're hungry. Yeah, exactly. Eating when you're hungry, whatever you want. Like when you're full. Exactly. You know, like these diets, it's ridiculous. You know, you don't have to be on a diet. You can eat as much as you want of whatever you want, whenever you want. If you're eating real food, if you're eating real food, if you're eating real food, and basically you have to grow it yourself for it to be real food then you can eat as much of it as you want whenever you want. You're not going to get fat. You know, you're not going to, like, get sick. You know, the food is your medicine. It's all full of nutrient-rich, you know, it's all nutrient-rich medicine. Um, so, you know, all the diet stuff, it disappears. You don't have to count your calories. You know, you eat as much as you want. Uh, you know, if you... Uh, you know, like, uh, you know, cussing and swearing, then you cuss and you swear because you can. You don't have to filter yourself. If you don't like to cuss and you swear, then you don't have to because you don't want to. It's not because you have to or you should or you're supposed to or because it's right or because it's wrong. It's because that's who you are and that's who, that's, that's who you are. You know, you get Basically, to... It. The only thing you can't do is impede others' happiness. Exactly. That's the only thing you can't do. That's the perfect world. So here in the Garden of Eden... We wake up whenever we want to. We go to bed whenever we want to. Uh, we don't ever have to get up and, you know, get in a car. We don't ever have to go, you know, compromise our truth or pretend, you know, that we're somebody that we're not or act appropriately or wear a uniform or, wear dre or comply with any dress code whatsoever. We don't ever have to do any of that. We don't have to, you know, wait for our paycheck to do the things that we want to do. We don't go on vacation. We live the vacation. We live the vacation like we don't need vacations man you know we're living the vacation uh, you know we're around the people every day that we most want to be around you know this is a really big thing like we don't spend time around people we don't love and that don't love us we don't spend time around people that disrespect us or you know that are taking advantage of us or only around us because we're you know we're doing something for them or because we're paying them or you know whatever like the people that are around us want to be around us more than anybody else and people that we're around, we want to be around them more than anybody else. And so we get to be with the people that we love and respect and admire and appreciate the most. How have the people in Arlington reacted to this, um, this raid and this subsequent publicity? And how have people nationally? You got a lot of support from people over the internet? Yeah, I mean, so far we haven't had a single email from anyone that says, you know, you guys need to stop complaining you know, shut up. Uh, we haven't had a single email from anyone saying, you know, uh, you know, you know, that's what you deserve. You shouldn't be dirty hippies. You know, uh, every single person that's contacted us, and it's been many hundreds of people, uh, you know, has said this is an outrage. This is, this is ridiculous. This is a travesty. This is an atrocity. This is a violation of your rights. This is absurd. This is ridiculous. Uh, you know, the truth is self-evident, you know? Like, people see the truth. It's very obvious. Now, are, is anybody really ready to do anything about it? No. Uh, pretty much no one's actually ready to do anything about it. What, what, what would doing something about that entail to the average person? Well, there's, you know, there's a lot of things that we could do. Uh, you know, most importantly... Uh, what it means is we, most importantly, ultimately, the, the, 
the thing that we can really do the most is stop feeding the system. Right? So yeah. that's the most important thing about what we're doing. You know, for ourselves, you know, obviously we live this really enjoyable life, this really healthy life, this really peaceful life, this really free life. But, um, you know, as far as our impact on the world, it's really beneficial because we're not feeding the system. Right? We're not spending thousands and thousands of dollars a year, you know, on petroleum to get from, you know, get from our house to our job, you know, and then from our job to our house. We're not spending, you know, thousands of dollars on petroleum to drive to the grocery store and all the other stores to buy every single thing that we use and consume. You know, we almost never get in the, we almost never get in the automobile because, you know, we really have almost nowhere to go. Uh, we don't buy stuff from the store. And, you know, really, there's almost nowhere we want to go and hang out anyways, because for the most part, everyone's just a slave, you know, so why do we want to go hang out with people that are, you know, they've got their blinders on, they're, you know, paying all their taxes, they're, you know, working their job, and, you know, they're just waiting for the weekend or, you know, for vacation. You know, we're not really interested in being around people like that. We want to be around people that are really living passionately full you know, healthy, vibrant, expressive lives. Those are the kind of people we want to live around. Um, those are the kind of people we want to be around. So, you know, those, you know, those kinds of people come to us. You know, we live in the vortex. We live in the vortex. The people that are ready to, you know, to live free and to, you know, to be real and to be authentic and, you know, be sustainable and healthy, you know, those people come and find us. Um, yeah. You know. We have, a, we have a thing here in Dayton. It's called Garden Station. And, uh, Essentially, it was just an abandoned urban lot where a lot of, uh, you know, drug use and uh, homeless people would, uh, you know, different problems uh, occurred. And they had a sustainable group here in the town, took the property over, and like a thousand different people have, have put in volunteer hours and they just created this beautiful little mecca of, you know, go in and eat food and they have all kinds of workshops on different sustainable you know different uh, ways to sustain yourself without paying money into that system which he says is like you say is it's really you know it's a uh, it's a predatory economic system in, in so many ways it forces like I said going back to those zoning things it forces us to do things we don't necessarily want to do such as driving everywhere the society has been designed that if you don't have a car, it's, it can be difficult for a lot of people, especially in, in certain places. So um, what do you guys plan next as far as any kind of legal redress? Um, well, you know, I just wanted to ex expand just a little bit more real quickly on the point I was making because really it's the most important point that we have to make about this whole ordeal is what can we actually do or what could people actually do. And that is, you know, stopping feeding the system, stop participating in the system. Like, you know, people could realize like, hey, you know, this is an atrocity. So guess what? I'm going to turn my front lawn into a garden and I'm going to live within my rights and I'm going to, you know, demand that uh, my rights are upheld. And if they're not, I'm going to make sure that they're enforced, you know, because our, our rights were violated. So... You know, other people can't go to court and file claims against the city for us. You know, it can't work that way. So we're not asking people to go to court and, you know, sue the city for us. It doesn't work like that. Um, you know, that's, that's our path. Uh, you know, but people could start, you know, making a point and saying, I'm going to start growing my own food or, you know, I'm going to get solar panels so that I stop paying the, you know, utility company or, you know, I'm going to you know, make a choice to do something, to make stop a step, right, to stop, to stop feeding the beast, to stop feeding the beast, to stop feeding the beast, exactly. Um, in fact, uh, you know, taxes, uh, there is plenty of documentation, plenty of law, and plenty of proof out there which shows you uh, the lawful way to not pay taxes. I'm not talking about ev tax evasion, I'm talking about lawful rights, and it's totally doable, it's totally possible. The IRS... It's a private corporation. The IRS is a private corporation, and when you when you fill out your um, tax forms, those are applications. You're applying to pay taxes. It's totally voluntary. It's totally optional. 
They've just tricked you into thinking that it's mandatory, and it's not. It's an application. It's an application. It is not mandatory. You do not have to pay the IRS. That's a fact. And I have all the law to prove that. Okay? This is really, really, really powerful stuff. I'm not talking about hypothesis, speculation, hearsay. I'm talking about fact. Okay? Really, really, really powerful stuff. What if people started doing that? What if people started doing that? The whole world would begin to change. So these are the main things that we can do. You know, people could protest. They could, you know, call the city and say, this is completely unacceptable and blah, 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 blah. But really, that wouldn't do anything because the city doesn't actually care whether the people are mad or not. The city only cares whether people pay their taxes or not. The city only cares whether people are compliant or not. And no matter how much... Taxes, they don't have salaries. Right, exactly. Exactly. I mean, yeah, I've talked to people. I've been in so many things online where people are just like, you know, it's time for a violent revolution. They haven't been in the military. That is the craziest thing anybody could even think about because they have prepared for that. That's what they do. They're waiting to just slug you over the head. Because that's like what a lot of these people have been trained in. They find, like, that's their ultimate moment of glory what they're yeah. living for. Yeah, I mean, there's there are warriors... You just take their salaries away because no one's going to do that if you can't pay them. Yeah, I mean, there are warrior spirits out there, and that's just who they are, is they're a warrior by nature. You sure. know, and so a violent revolution is, you know, naturally what, they, what they're called to and what they see as the solution, but, you know, I pray that it doesn't come to that. I pray that people are smarter okay. and they use their pen. They use their pen and their paper. Okay, I just lost you a second ago after I was talking about, you know, forget about any kind of violence. Strip salaries away through living different lifestyles where, hey, if I said, if everyone I know saves, you know, doesn't spend $2,000 at Kroger and Produce this year, that's one uh, multinational conglomerate that doesn't have and that's more money that's not feeding the beast. Exactly. Those are real solutions, real practical solutions. Um, and, and those are things that don't even require, you know, engaging the law whatsoever. You know, you just, you just stop buying your food at a grocery store. You just stop, you know, getting your electricity from a utility company. And the whole fabric of, you know, the society and the country that we know and exist in right now already begins to change drastically and dramatically.